And you can hear me. Yeah, let's go. You can hear me? Yes, you're welcome. You can continue now. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. I just wanted to clarify whether you can hear me clearly. Yeah, you are clear. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Christine. And indeed, this is uh, the right forum. And hi to everyone. I, my name is Charles Yeshohi. Uh, I, um, I, I pride myself as a, a banker by profession. Although I did a Bachelor of Education degree, I, I, I did some teaching for quite some time. Then after that, I went into banking. But when I was still in banking, I, I managed uh, to uh, support the education sector through number one, I ran a, a school, a private school. Uh, number two, I am also um, a board chairman in one of the secondary school in our village. <clears throat> and I also interact a lot with the teaching fraternity. And that's, uh, that's how I came also to interact with uh, Dr. Christine. Uh, my experience in banking and in financial matters, now I'm finishing 20 years. I, I know when you look at my face, it doesn't look like that. <laughs> uh, but I can tell you I have been in the banking industry. Uh, I, I, I did have 13 years in several banks, both the Tier 1 banks here in Kenya and uh, Tier 2 banks. And then I also uh, managed to get into consultancy. And then after that, I am now back into an investment uh, banking arm where I deal with uh, and, um, recruiting those who want to invest and especially in the government uh, 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 bonds and even uh, shares that are traded in Nairobi Securities Exchange. Out of all these experience, I realized and I came across uh, many people who are struggling in terms of debts. And the reason why they are struggling is because of a small thing. And this is what now I'm going to share, not small as such, but I'm saying it's basic. I think the right word is to use basic. It's not so unique. It's something that we can be able to implement all of us. So I want to take us through, and thank you, Dr. Christine, also for this forum. I appreciate so much. And it is good that you are challenging us. And the reason why I even felt like I need to present is because you also challenged, uh, you challenged me. So uh, in terms of the, the messages that you usually share, so continue doing the good work we appreciate and, and may God bless you so much. The other thing I needed also to say, I think it's also good to uh, say my stunt. Uh, I am a born again Christian and uh, actively involved in uh, church activities. Uh, but of course, the right uh, the right denomination here in Kenya now, right now, <laughs> we are facing some few challenges in the in terms of the the gospel. But I am in the right Christian uh, denomination, uh, Bible believing church. So I want to share briefly because I I know I don't have enough uh, a lot of time. Uh, but number one thing I want us to look at is debts and financial management. But in regards to, is it possible to thrive even in the midst of debts? And I would want to ask uh, briefly, and I would wish this one you share uh, through the, you share through the, the uh, the the comment the charts said action 
uh, will also uh, form the basis of my discussion. Who, what do you think is a major uh, challenge? Or what do you think is causing a lot of deaths in the country, both at the national level and also at the individual level? There are so many people in crisis of deaths. If I share with you the statistics and the figures of the people who contact us to assist, there are so many others even at the verge of committing suicide. So we wanted to find out from your end, uh, what, what do you think is the major challenge uh, in terms of deaths? Just share briefly. Uh, just write your chat or your comment. Even at a personal level, what do you think causes uh, you to get into heavy debts or has made uh, people to go into heavy debts? I can see some comments and thank you for that. Yeah, there is uh, yeah, the, the situation in our you, country. I can help you to read. Sarah is saying yes. high cost of living versus the income. Tom is saying low income wages and unemployment. And Caleb is saying lack of planning. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lack of planning with all that. Uh, Salim is saying great living standards, indeed, uh, costly in our on our income. Celine is saying causes of debt include impulse, seeing what others have, and you go for it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I like okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. OK, the impulse and all that, uh, and then increasing burdens. Yeah, I can tell you all those are valid reasons. And I know if you're in a class, I would have said we clap for ourselves. And uh, thank you for your responses. And you continue uh, sharing with us uh, that and if you can be able to see my presentation, are you able to see it from your end? Yes, it's very clear. Okay. Now, this, this is what I would wish we, we look at, uh, at. In our... Uh, background the way we are brought up i can tell you even though the society and even at the school level and at the church level there is little exposure in terms of money and how to budget and how to um, um, manage your, uh, the money that you're given and all that they are our upbringing even in school right from primary and maybe up to university level in some cases, we are really exposed to managing money. If you look at our other people like um, the Indians, they exposed their children right from the young stage. And so by the time now they are finishing uh, school, they can be able even to manage a, a business, they can be able to be put in a position of influence in the business and such things. But our, our bringing both at the society level and even at the academics level, we are rarely taught these matters. And even if we are, it is not practical exposure. So that is a part of our background. But now, how do we find ourselves currently? We find ourselves in a new career, in a different location, like the way Dr. Christine is in a different country. We find ourselves in a different location. And nobody maybe taught you this is how we are supposed to do here. This is how we manage money here. This is the way we go to deal with things. We also have faced society needs or demands. Like now, this week only, I can tell you the number of um, mm -hmm. contributions and harambees and all that have been called for. I was even trying to budget and check if I was to contribute to all of them, that would be even more than half of my salary. 
so there is a lot of demands. There is a lot of peer inference, and some people have mentioned that uh, in your chats. Then the family and relative support. You find you need to support people. Yes, they are in heavy challenges. And, and I know like majority of us in teaching profession, I know during COVID, you are one of those we could consider the best in a profession to work in during COVID because the TSC still continued to do the payments and the salaries. Whereas as uh, we are, our businesses and all that, we are Tom, others, we needed a lot of that support uh, from those who are working. So when you are now faced with such challenges, family and relative support it becomes a challenge. And the other thing that you always, uh, we are faced on or we are faced in is, we are always thinking, what is my plan B? What is my hustle? What can I be able to do to increase what I have uh, currently? So all these, they are part of what we are facing now. And when you look at now our background, where we are or where we came from, nobody exposed us fully to what we are going through now. So we have now one side, the background, which has a disconnect or there's a missing link. Uh, sorry, Charles, we lost you a bit. Yeah. Uh, what Charles was talking about is uh, definitely uh, because we've not had someone to give us the right information. You're back, Charles. We lost yes. you for some time. Okay, you can project again. Oh. Let me give you the rights. Okay. Okay, okay you're already, so you're still co-host. Continue. Uh, is it being projected? Let me just project again. I think it, yeah. yeah. It thank helps. you, thank you for letting me. Is it okay now? Yes, yes. Okay. Maybe what you can do, okay. use use the, yeah. the, okay, good. No, the other mod. Yeah, I use the full screen. Your full screen. Yes, yeah. So that, the, the, the dead pain points, that I, I wanted us to learn about. Uh, these are the main common ones that you, we get ourselves into. And when I'm saying this, by the way, I am saying even at a practical level, that even after having worked in banking sector, I still faced some of these death pain points. Number one is you, you find ourselves over indebted you have heavy debt compared to income. Number, uh, we also have multiple loans. Right now in our country, because of the uh, infract of the mobile phone lending, where you can just borrow against, uh, the, uh, borrow from the mobile, the full leases, the insurance and the rest, eh? there are so many multiple loans and people uh, have interacted with people who have borrowed in more than 10 mobile phone uh, apps. Then you find others because of having heavy debts, they lack a lot of discipline in managing these debts. And then inability also to pay loans because of lack of accountability partner is also very key. And I can go on and on with all these uh, list and pain points, but uh, there are many. But one of the key things that I have seen is there is a lot of fear of saying no. So you know you don't have the cash, you know you don't have the money, uh, but you still go ahead and continue getting into the debts just to make sure that you don't say no to either your spouse, your parents, your relatives, your friends, or the others. Yeah. So what happens is you find now 
when you have many debts, you get into marriage and friends, uh, the friendships are also put into a jeopardy because of these heavy multiple debts. And consequently, then you start being drained emotionally and you don't even see the benefits of working or the benefits of even where well, you are always, uh, maybe somebody is always uh, not happy even when they are going to work because they can't see the sense of working because you're working, but at the end of the month, everything goes uh, towards you now paying the debt. So that is some of the, uh, those are some of the things that we, we go through. I told you now, my, in my case, at a personal level, I went through uh, these challenges also. I was brought up in a rural village, the school, uh, where the church was just also around, but there was no exposure on money matters. We were supposed to discover most of the things on our own. How did we do it? You are sent now buying an item. And in most of the cases, that item that you are sent to buy, maybe is soap, it is sugar and all that, you will not be given a lot of money. Because they would think, or our parents would think, that it can get lost on the way and all that. So what the match maybe in most of the cases we're given is a hundred shillings or thereabout. But as also now, I got involved in assisting my mom who was having a shop, but the only thing that she could expose me to in most of the cases is, please get for me that soap, there's this client who want to buy, get for me a kilo of sugar, get for me. I was a messenger in the shop. Then in the evening, I'll be released to go home early then she will continue now doing uh, the reconciliation and then after that close the shop and come home. So that is the main exposure that I got into. What happened now in my journey, I went through primary to university, went to Sunday school, I did all that. I, I was doing very well even in home and farm duties and even my career and I eventually, after going through my education system up to university level, and by the way, I did, by the way I said, I did Bachelor of Education, but I also did a certified public accounting course. I found myself in senior management. Then I also found myself as an entrepreneur, the way of telling you that uh, running a business. But now the money making and management arrangement where we are taught this is the basic thing. Most of the things, even after learning accounting and all that, in most of the cases, and you agree with me, theory and practical, in some cases, they usually are mismatch <laughs> because you try now to bring whatever you have learned theoretically into practice. Sometimes you find like it is too much. You may not have all that. Whatever all the accounting that you learned, if you put them now in a small business, then you not work. You start now doing accounting and such. But if some, if I had been exposed fully, I am sure my some of the struggles I went through, I would not have. Uh, done it. So that missing link, number one thing I want us to learn from this presentation, please, and I, and I hope you're you are getting me here, please make sure that you expose our, we expose our children as early as possible in matters finances. Not just sending them to the shop and all that, no. Even if you can make them have a kitty, even if you can expose them to that small business that you do, both from end to end, if you're running like a small business, even if it is a shop, involve them. If you are doing a dairy farming, involve them, not just telling them, and uh, uh, cut them a journey and all that, no. 
involve them even in addition to this is how I receive uh, when I go and I sell or you even show them how you do it. You sell this number of kgs I'm paid at the end of the month. This is how I budget and all that. So try to expose them. I'm sure you don't want to expose yourself fully, but there is an element you can be able to expose them to and they'll be able to understand why you get into challenges, especially when you don't manage to pay some of the things they usually request us to. But on the same time, even ourselves, please, despite all these challenges that we have faced in our background, one of the key things I appreciate is now in our current status where the internet is all over, where Google, we can be able to search, we can be able to link ourselves to forums. Now we can be able to get information at our fingertips. You agree with me that in those days when we are growing up, uh, that was something that we are just uh, getting them on in, in news and such. But right now, everything is at the uh, fingerprint. Uh, we can be able to access everything from our phone, from our laptops, from our computers, all that. So make sure now you feed yourself with a lot of information the way we are doing now, so that you can be able to uh, be able to equip yourself on money matters. Now, let's go now to you have found yourself into debts. And when I asked what the main reason behind why we find ourselves into debts, I know majority of us, we said it's because of our high uh, standard of living or even uh, in the economy, the challenges in the economy and all those things. We mentioned all of them. But now how do you fight uh, out the issue of the economy. Yeah, even at our level, it may not be so easy because of course the government is in charge, but on the other side, we still need also to participate on our own. In my experience, and I want uh, to give you an example. One of, one of the, uh, uh, my, well, one of my clients who called me in the, in the teaching uh, profession wanted me to help them get out of the debts. And this is what uh, she told me. That for me, I, 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 I have a, a family and where my, our school is, is a bit far. So what happened is I was forced to buy a, a vehicle because when I use a border border, I get sick because of a cold early in the morning and also cold in the evening when I'm, and, and then there are several kilometers and the, the road is a bit bumpy. So she used to get sick every now and then. So the reason, uh, the, the main thing that she did is to go and get a loan and she was given that loan and she bought a vehicle and now things now cool down in terms of health. But now there was a challenge. The salary she was having was not able to sustain both the family and also the vehicle repayment. So what did she do? She started struggling. So by the time she was calling me, she was so much into depression and she was telling me she doesn't even value this career at all. She is even thinking of giving up and she was getting very stressed. So she wanted some help. So as we talked, I was able to point out several things. And these are the things I want us to learn here. The, the solution I'm giving here is a solution that has been tried. And this is what we do and uh, we, we have been doing at the banking level. 
but it is never shared with the, the, the public who are borrowing. And I want to explain. The principle is called Campari. I would want us to repeat that wherever you are, even if don't unmute, but you can say it loudly, Campari. You have said it, eh? <laughs> uh, Dr. Christine, I can allow you to unmute and say it so that I get your response. <laughs> Ka, well, repeat again, Ka? Kam, Campari. Campari. Yeah, you can be able to see that C-A-M-P-A-R-I. Uh, on my screen. Oh, the, uh, is it the next slide? Because we are still at the pain points. Oh, you still, well, okay, it is, uh, it, I moved from the pain points, now I'm in this other one. Is it showing? No. So maybe you need to to pull down. Okay. Then you come again. Yeah. Maybe I, I'm wondering why. Oh yeah. Sorry. I have now realized where my mistake was. Right. I had opened two screens. Yeah. Sorry for that. I had I had two PowerPoint presentations. Okay. That we're making uh, we not yeah so what i'm saying is there is the the main thing uh let me just load as i talk the main thing that's affecting people is because of lack of some coherence between now the banking what banks want and what uh what the borrower want there is usually a disconnect. And that disconnect is brought about by now that what I'm saying or what I'm calling Campari or a principle called Campari. You kindly share Cam your screen. Yes, I was opening it. It disappeared when I caught. Now you can be able to see. Is it visible? Yes, we can now see it. You can now scroll down to the cam cap. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, so let me now you can be able to see what I'm talking about. Eh? Yes. Is it yes. there? Yes. Yeah, sorry. I think I had opened two PowerPoint presentations, so I was dealing with the other one. All right. Now the Campari principle Campari. is a principle. Yes, Campari it is a principle used. Yes, used in banking. Mm -hmm. And number one thing that you always need to check is number one is your character as a borrower. From our end, the lenders, we are able to monitor or to know your character or to assess your character and say this is a good person we can lend to but from your end you as a borrower do you have the right character even to borrow or to present yourself to a financier a good example is if you have multiple loans you have a mobile loan, you have a circle loan, you have a, a chama loan, you have another debt now with a friend somewhere, and you come now to borrow. And then you are asked, give us the list of all the loans that you have. So that by the time you are by the time you are praising you against your income, against your salary we know whether you qualify or not. Let me tell you, majority, including me, you never disclose, isn't it? <laughs> you find you never disclose because you want that loan. What happens? You get the loan, but because you did not disclose, 
you are forced on to have another repayment. And then the other thing that will happen is you have now multiple loans to pay all over, with your simple or with your small salary. So at the end of few months or few years, you start struggling. Why? If you obeyed your character and you said, my character is straightforward, whether I qualify or not. If I don't qualify, I'm going to work towards qualifying. Let me disclose everything. So that if I'm told no, let me be told then, what am I supposed to do so that by the time I'm borrowing, I'll have good ratio, or I'll have good now uh, 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 income and uh, expenses arrangement that you help me borrow and I will not in, be into difficult things. The other aspect of character is affected at the banking or the financial level. No financial majority of those staff, and I am saying this, please, and I hope you take it uh, in the best way. Can you, can, have, you, can you move to the next slide? The next? Uh, sorry, I, I wanted to go through this, the, the Campari. The case then study, after... that is, you, we are looking at the case study. Oh, sorry. It is the yeah. case study. Yeah, I think this is what you are explaining. We are looking yes, for it, we are not getting what... it. <laughs> yeah, thank okay, you. I think, let, let me put it that way without now doing the full screen. I think that's why it is facing a challenge. You've because not even of, uh, given us, you've not even given us full screen. Yes, right now I've said, let me not give the full screen. That's mm -hmm. why you have a challenge. Oh yeah, so allow yeah me please, to now it. this is very important to us. Please explain again, because we were, we were yeah. actually lost. Yeah, let me put it now the way it is. Yes. Number one, I said now the character. Character is very key. And I can tell you, at the banking level, we work under, or people work there under targets. And it's not like in TSC. By the way, as in banking sector, you always thank God every year that you are able to be sustained in employment. Because if you don't meet your target, you are released. So what happens is, our, our people will make sure, staff will make sure that they get loans as much as possible. So even if you don't qualify, I'll even make sure that you, I fix in a way that you qualify so that you get that loan, so that I hit my target. So majority of the people who are in struggling right now, it's because in terms of their character, they never said no, or they never disclosed everything. And also on the other side, the financier, the staff did not get, get you or did not disclose everything to you. So please, my prayer is never put yourself into a fix because somebody wants to lend to you. I know so many teachers, including some of my relatives, who are earning when everything is deducted, all the salaries, insurances, and all that. They are just going home on a monthly basis with 3,000 shillings. From all that salary, they go, go to home salary is 3,000. Others are borrowing on a daily basis. Why? because of that issue of character. Please, let's ensure we, uh, we, 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 we are talking about the, the, the right thing. I did that, uh, and I'm usually an open person. I like sharing even from a practical perspective. There's a, a, a farmer, there's a, a land I wanted to buy, and it was a huge one. But I didn't qualify based on my business income and my salary. Then, and, and I'm saying this, that time I was still born again. I got saved uh, immediately after high school. I was still born again. 
But because of now getting into uh, banking and I seeing how people do to get financed and all that, I said, now even when I left and I said, let me also do what people do. So when I gave my financials to these staff in one of the bank, they checked and they told me you can't qualify. This is what you are supposed to do. You're supposed to report a profit of this much and your books should look like this. And they prepared for me the books, the end, the accounts, the way they are supposed to be. And it went ahead and I still got that loan as I wanted. I bought that land and I was very happy I have now the land. But let me tell you, many years after that, that land became my biggest pain point in a way that it affected and even ate everything that I saved, even everything I had, and to a point of it almost broke my marriage. Why? Because I did not follow my character and my, uh, my, my Christian principles. Then the other thing that now happened is, yes, I thank God I went through all that. After going through so many challenges through that land that I bought, because it put me into a very big mess, uh, I thank God that God still is gracious enough that after some point, I had now that calling of let me train people with all the skills that I have. Let me talk to people about debt and debt management <coughs> And that is why I came up with this uh, uh, arrangement of debt advisory program. Yes, I thank God I went, uh, I, I was able to overcome, but I can tell you it is painful. So please let's avoid that. I may not be able to discuss all the items on all these uh, items I have not um, uh, put here. But I will allow me to just talk about either two or there about other two or three. The other thing is ability. You see, ability to pay, which I have also mentioned there, is you are, if you are borrowing a one million loan and your repayment is, let's say your repayment is 10,000 per month, yeah. And you cannot afford that 10,000. Please don't force that 10,000 or don't force yourself. Even if you are now told, let's extend this loan to another 10 years or another five years so that you can afford. Please check your ability to pay clearly and make sure that it is not fixed by the bank or by the financier and make sure that you are able uh, to pay. I give you now uh, this uh, issue of the, 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 the lady that I was talking about. Yes, the, the circle that gave her the amount of money, the, the circle that gave her that, uh, that loan, they, they had also analyzed and they were feeling uh, she is able to pay. But what she had not disclosed is that in my family, my husband is not in a good uh, job and all of them, my whole family rely on my salary. So she did not disclose that. So her ability to pay was pegged on the salary but not on the whole, uh, because you're supposed to do a whole income and expenditure arrangement, including debts. So when she managed to get the, the car, she was always borrowing even for fuel because she cannot afford. And how, where was she borrowing? She was borrowing from Akina Fuliza, Akina Mshwari, and the rest, uh, Tala and such. So she would go like that. And at the end of it all, the vehicle was 
now at the verge of being auctioned by the time now she was calling me. What did I tell her? That yes, I don't do lending. I'm not going to give you money, but this is what you're going to do. I asked her, do you have a house? Or can you be able to get a house at the school? And she told me, in fact, I was staying in a house in the school, but because I was feeling like uh, <clears throat> I am the, well, among the oldest teacher, I'm still staying in the school and all those others are still doing well and yet they came, uh, they are younger than me. So she was feeling like I don't need to stay in a school <laughs> because of her status and her age and her experience. But I told her, please talk to your husband, agree now to stay in the school and be traveling over the weekend. You save a lot. And then I told her, please discuss this issue with your husband. You are in a crisis and unless you discuss, you will not be able to get out of that. And she agreed to do that. And I believe right now she is better off because of she was able to make that decision the other thing i told her is to sell that vehicle before it is sold by auctioneers so when i am talking about this your character your ability to pay and now the that one the means now before before you continue my brother uh Sarah, Sarah is saying here mm, mm -hmm. i think this is important She's asking yeah. about the land because she's saying she's almost doing that. She, uh, sorry, I haven't read the comments. She's yeah, almost. This, this is what Sarah is saying. Yes. Let me read it for you. Mm, kindly touch okay. on what happened to the land because I'm almost doing the same thing. <laughs> My land. Isn't yes. It? Okay, <laughs> that is a good question. This is this is what happened now to the land. I decided to approach because of my banking knowledge. I decided to approach the bank, and I told them, "You, you, you gave me this land, or you financed me this land, and I'm struggling. I'm not able to pay my businesses down." And more so, it was affected by COVID. The COVID is the one that affected. So what I did is I went to the bank and I told the bank, this is my proposal. Let us subdivide the land because it was several acres. Subdivide into eight, 50 by 100 plots. Then I am able now to sell that land using the uh, small portions as opposed to a bigger portion. When I had invited people now to come and uh, buy the whole land to, so that I get out of the, uh, the debt, the figure they, was, they were giving me was not even enough to clear the loan. But when I approached the bank and I told them, if I subdivide, this is the amount of money I'm going to get and I'm still be left with a big portion. So I was able to do it. I sold now the plots and I am still left with a, 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 a portion that is enough for me to carry out some of the businesses I do like dairy farming and such. And that is how I got out of that. But it, it took a lot of pressure even at the bank and to convince them because they were not willing to release the title so that it can be discharged and shared and, and subdivided. So that is some, those are some of the things I did. I, I, I know uh, many others are asking few other clarifications, but let, allow me first of all to touch on the means and I look at the questions. The means, means here, like, and this one happens to many of us who are Christians. You want to uh, do a business that is very good in profit making. You know some of those businesses? You, your faith does not allow you to get into it. But 
you are thinking if I go to that business, this business is the only one that is giving money. Any other, I can put it in quote, any other Christian <laughs> uh, related business will not give me as much money as I want. So there is that high temptation of getting into such businesses. But what does it do? It affects your character, it affects your, 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 as in it will affect you even at the family level. Don't go to those other businesses that you feel they are not related to your faith just for the sake of money. But also on this other side, you may go to a business that is also not bringing you good money. What do you do? Do you continue struggling or do you, uh, and when you go now to borrow, you cannot qualify because it's also not giving you money. Those are some of the challenges that we face. But also as we look at it, even your salary, whether you have a business or not, your salary is a means of repayment of a loan. So that means of repayment of the loan through your salary, that it means that you need to guard your salary so much because it is a means of even getting a fi financing. Yeah. But it is limited. And salary, I know that is a principle that works. You should not borrow beyond a third. Uh, you should, your repayment should not be beyond a third of your salary. So when you look at that, a third is already <laughs> consumed by many other things. So how do you get into it? My solution here is, and I can tell you it is possible, look for ways of raising money through other sources without borrowing. It is possible. Whoever can tell me here it is not possible, I would wish even to discuss with you personally, because even as a teacher, it is possible even in your own profession, wherever you are, it is possible. I have done it. There's a time I said, I'm not going to borrow anything. And I was able to get into a new business line without borrowing at a personal level. It is possible even for you. Don't always tell yourself that I cannot be able to uh, I cannot be able to do anything to raise more income without borrowing. It is possible. So I know I have touched those uh, three areas, but we can get time to talk about all the other areas later. Uh, but let me look at what has been raised uh, so far. I can see many people are now talking about, thank you for sharing. Uh, I, I touch on what happened, I have already said that. Somebody is saying I can surely relate and good advice, loan repayment is a problem to some of us. And then I understand that one should take a loan commensurate to his or her paying ability also to control appetite for loan. Thank you, Moses, for that. But I can say it is easier said than done. <laughs> I have seen people, you are struggling. Imagine now you have to pay school fees and you have to, and to, to continue on, on living. So what do you do? You end up. So how do you control your appetite? The only way you can control your appetite is making sure that you look for a solution to your current debt status. Uh, one, as I conclude, I, allow me to give you an example, another example, another classic case. One of a, a, a teacher who was facing a big challenge, uh, and the challenge was the father who is aged and almost retiring, uh, decided because she is a firstborn going to have all uh, the kids who are still in school now going to 
be educated now by her or the school fees is being paid by her. So the, this teacher was paying now for the siblings, the school fees. By the time she was calling me, she had her, her house, because she was in a rented house, was, has, had already been locked. Then the other thing that was happening is, because she is a single mother, now her children had also been sent home from a school and she needed help. Her salary is not enough because it has all the loans, including the mobile loans. So in such a case, how do you help someone like that? And those who are writing, how do you help now someone who is like that who the father has brought the children uh, for the, the ones who are yet in school to be educated by her because she is in a firstborn and she is now considered as one of those who are now working well. And of course, the father uh, did her, his part by educating her. So what do you do? <laughs> Let me see some comments. Uh, what do you, how, how can you advise that person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know it will be difficult to write because it is a complicated case. But this is what I did. I go for more loan. <laughs> go for more loan. You are killing that lady. <laughs> you cannot go for more loan. The best what I did is to interrogate her and even making fees arrangement in the school and paying installment. It's also a good idea, but she was already even now, she was not able even to make the, the children join, go to the school and then discuss that because the school was insisting you have to have uh, some money, some money to pay. Then, yeah, I have seen that that one, uh, that have a talk with your father and saying that, no, that is dangerous. Yeah. So what we did is we analyzed her situation and we were able to come up with a solution. Yes, it's good to find uh, some side hustle, as you're saying, but you have inhibited, debts, you can't even pay rent. Are you going to look for a side hustle or to look for <laughs> uh, to look for uh, money or uh, for money even to be able to take care of the family? So what we did is after discussing, we realized the father is still teaching. She uh, the the father is in his last years of teaching, so he had not retired. So when you're saying have a talk with the father, that is one of the correct way to advise such a person. So I, and he was, I, when I asked him, do you have a good rapport with your father? No, they didn't have a very good rapport. But I told, he, I told her, this is the time now to be candid enough. And you tell yourself, I have to talk to my father. And I tell him, this is a situation. I cannot be able to pay school fees. Even my rent, I am not able. Please take charge. I'll help you later when my finances improve. And I told him, he told her she must be bold enough to do that. The other thing that we discussed is <laughs> what are the subjects that you teach? And she told me she teaches sciences in high school. Yeah. So is it possible to get, even if it is one or two kids, you do tuition in the evening? And she told me it is possible. Yes, I have, but I was thinking I cannot get time. I told her now it is time to sacrifice and create that time. And eventually after discussing very various solutions, she was so happy and she told me one of the things I want to confess here is she told me that she had not 
had somebody encouraging and directing her that way and she had felt so discouraged in to a point of quitting church because she was feeling even salvation is not helping her but i after talking now she was very happy with that so for me as i share this and what this forum that dr christine has brought to us as i conclude now is ability to also start being accountable to one another when you have a friend who is struggling please don't just go and pray praying is good but go beyond let bring facts into place let's discuss let's have accountability partners people we can be able to share with those deep matters that are affecting us i can share more and more but because of time allow me to conclude uh, there but still remember there is campari principle we apply it very well in banking but on your end as a borrower you don't if you ask uh, dr christine right now where she is in canada and uh, those developed countries let me tell you before you qualify for a facility or a loan <laughs> they have checked you so much that you they know they are, they don't even need collateral mm -hmm. isn't it dr mm -hmm. yeah they in don't fact, need collateral. in fact you don't you don't have to have money in your account they yes. just look at your credit how are you repaying yeah. your loans yeah yes. even if you don't have money in your account they will give you money if you are repaying your loans yeah. as expected yes yeah. So all the, they apply those uh, parameters very well, but also the borrowers, the people are also so much disciplined because if you are not disciplined, you're also not going to get finances. So for me, it is my prayer that we are going to be disciplined so that we don't affect ourselves. Thank you so much and God bless you so much. Oh, I don't know how to do it, but really thank you very much. Uh, for the advice, there is so much that we need to learn from you, Charles. I hope you will still uh, create some more time because you only went to slide five and you have 15 slides. Uh, we really need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, it is true. And I can see some questions are still uh, trickling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is the, the, the person who is saying about how do you do to those loans that uh, that like uh, the one from that bank which doesn't need a guarantor, yet they buy your loans. Please, before you agree to get your loan bought off, before you agree to go to that loan that you feel is so attractive, analyze your status analyze your status and make sure that you are borrowing when you are fully fully assured that you are you can be able to have ability to pay not just now even in the near future even if something was to happen and don't just agree number one thing i usually uh, try to discourage don't go for a top up mm -hmm don't go for that buy-off i will tell you why in the next meetings because this time i can do a calculation for you and you see the amount of interest that you're going to pay the bank you'll be the one losing mm -hmm. please before you make that move and you'd rather even contact me and help you do the workings then by the time you're signing that of a letter you are very sure Thank you very much, uh, Charles. Uh, probably the Ritambodi who is now in dire need of your support, you can give us your number. Maybe you write it on the chat and say it out because I will be sharing this uh, recording. Okay, uh, this is my number I'm typing. Uh, but those those who are also those who are also uh, writing down as I also type there, I'm also sharing that screen that has my contacts. 
you can see it. Yeah, so what I prefer is, uh, I prefer we to be contacted on, on WhatsApp because of my, uh, because of my work, nature of work. Uh, if you call, you may find sometimes I'm not picking. So I prefer you, I prefer you, you just do a WhatsApp. Wow, thank you very much, Charles. Uh, really, may God bless you for being so generous with information that we didn't have. Uh, in actual sense, matters money are very, very challenging. Sometimes you get yourself mm. in a fix, you don't know what to do. Like now, that is why personally, at one point I had to result on, why can't I just call friends to changa for me? Because now taking a top up on top of a top up, like now I'm out of the country, Kenya, I cannot get a loan, you know, I cannot get yeah. a loan back home. I can only uh, maybe just work and start afresh, yeah? So like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I also, I think I'll also come to you for some advice. <laughs> yeah, and, and so to tell you maybe character. to share this. Eh? Yeah, thank and you. To share this about you. Uh, that was the right move, Dr. Uh, and many people are shying off from going through that route. Instead of borrowing, mm -hmm. I would rather now you do what you did. You don't want to put yourself into more fixes and yet you don't you haven't started working. Mm -hmm. The best thing is the way you did. You say, I'm not going to shy off, I am going to approach people. Mm -hmm. Please, some of these decisions require uh such a bold move and a drastic move like uh, the way you did so i am very happy with what you did and don't shy away of that yeah <laughs> thank you very much thank, thank you. you thank you so much let us all um appreciate our facilitator today as we move to the next facilitator let us go to our reactions please clap thumbs up uh, use the reactions to put your thumbs up for Charles. Uh, very informative. And don't shy away from contacting him, contacting him at personal level. Yeah, please go. Just, just uh, use WhatsApp as he has said. Getting him here has been a challenge because he is forever busy. Thank you so much, Charles, for honoring us. I am so humbled that you accepted to come and talk to my friends. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. thank you thank too. You. And God bless you. Thank you. Yeah, God bless you. So the next person that is going to speak to us is uh, uh, one of us. She's in Kenya. Her name is Beryl CG. Beryl CG, when she was talking to me, okay, she learned that I am sharing about uh, traveling abroad. <laughs> She challenged me. She asked me, Doctor, you are busy telling people to come and join you <laughs> because of the good things that are in Canada. There are still many things that our people can enjoy back here at home. I want to expose them to uh, matters traveling in Kenya. In case people want to learn what is in our country, what is in Kenya, and how they can appreciate our country, I want to talk to them. Now, it is none other than Beryl. Charles, maybe you can pull down your screen so that I now can usher in Beryl. Thank you very much. Beryl, where are you? Please shout. Yeah, thank you. Uh, maybe you can put on your camera. I've made you co-host. Unmute Hi. yourself. Yeah, good. Thank you. Welcome, Beryl. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yeah, my name's Abdel. Thank 
You're breaking. From and we can see. Yeah. Okay, Beryl, uh, you, okay, just talk to us because you're, you're breaking. Can you hear me now? Yes, now you can avoid the camera because you're breaking. Okay. Yeah. Now, my name, is, my name is Beryl from Mombasa, Kenya. I live in Kenya. Uh, I work in Kenya, in Mombasa and Nairobi. I'm a travel expert in the industries, uh, matters travel and tourism. And Dr. Sina has been talking about traveling abroad and I've been wondering, why does everyone wants to go to Canada? Others are telling me they want to go to the US. Others are telling me they want to go to Germany. There are lots of things that we can do here in Kenya. Now, we are all born and brought up in Kenya by a show of hands. Let's see how many people have traveled to Masai Mara. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, 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 we are there. Yes. People have raised hands. up their hands. There is Peter, there so is I... Caleb. They've gone Only to Masai Mara. Only two people have traveled to Masai Mara, whereas we have lots of things that we can see in Masai Mara. We can see, we can visit Naivasha, Nakuru, being teachers in the industry. We can take our children to get and see, to go, to go and visit places like um, come to Mombasa, even see a place like Fort Jesus. Yeah, go to Diani, swim with the dolphins. So why is it that we are having many, many visitors coming to Kenya, spending lots and lots of money to see this scenic um, <clears throat> sites, but us who are born and brought up in Kenya, we can't say anything about our country. So when she told me that uh, people are, <laughs> I can see Celine saying that money is the problem. Another is saying, yeah, I've never visited Masai Mara. You see, someone is 40, someone is 50. They've never gone to Masai Mara. They've never seen a lion so close. They've never seen like July is coming, the wild beast migration. They've never experienced the seventh wonder. So I wanted to encourage each and everyone. Here in Kenya, we have lots of beautiful things that we can, we can go out and see not only for exposure, but you can go out and when you go and see these things, you relax. You reduce the pressure, the normal pressure that we have in life. Every day, the, you wake up in the morning, five in the morning, leave by six, you've left, coming back dark in the evening. But what do you do to take your time off, to relax, to think, to plan for tomorrow? So I would emphasize and encourage each and every one of us to try and, and get the small getaways, the small uh, holidays to bond with our families, to bond with our friends, yeah? As a church, you can travel to pilgrimage areas. You get to learn more about <clears throat> the stories that we read in the Bible, yeah? So when you want to go up, when you want, I can see Millicent. Millicent says that we want to go abroad for greener pastures. Yes, that I agree. But also here in Kenya, we can create something for ourselves. How? But seeing the opportunities that is around us. When you have, I remember when I used to be very young, I used to, I used to tell myself all the time that I want to go to Dubai because I used to have a, a sibling friend who went to Dubai got a job and she was doing very, very well. But when I turned around uh, 26 years, it, was, it wasn't happening. I wasn't getting the opportunity to go out. So what did I do? I changed my mindset. I said, if I have to go, what can I sell? What can I do? Because since um, I was very young, I liked doing business. Would not tell me about sitting in one place, waking up in the morning, going. It was kind of boring for me. So I said, it has to work out. So I started off, um, did this travel uh, and tourism thing, learned about it, 
mastered the art, started off. And here we are today. So I believe as much as we are going out to look for uh, better opportunities, better opportunities like Dr. Tina, now that she's there, she can call us, all of us to go and experience this for ourselves, for our children. I believe we can also create something here in Kenya by traveling, coming from wherever you are. If someone is in Kisumu, you can come to Mombasa, get to see what opportunities are there, exchange, Someone from Mombasa, go to another place, get to see. Not staying in one place. It is unfortunate that someone has been born in Kisumu, has never come to Mombasa. Someone has been born in Naivasha, has never gone to uh, Meru to get to see what the Meru people are doing. So we can exchange by traveling. Yeah, we can exchange this by uh, traveling, cultural um, exchange, yeah, which is very important for, for us and everybody. I believe if I go to, the other day I went to Narok and I met a lady. This lady was, um, she used to be a politician, but come 2023, she didn't, she didn't, get, she didn't get a place to, she didn't get position. Now she went back to the drawing board. Uh, now what do you do? Can you believe it? She told us that nowadays, I am rearing cows. Cows? How are you rearing cows? I'm rearing cows. I'm feeding them. You remember the time that drought was there? People were selling cows 500 shillings. So she went and bought like lorries of those cows. She came, fed them, took care of them, and now she's selling off. One cow, 70 to 80,000 shillings. She's not struggling. If I did travel from Mombasa to Narok, I would not know that when I do this kind of farming, I can get this kind of income. You don't need to struggle. It just tells you that you need to know the right thing to give the animal, the right treatment to give the animal. And that is, that is it. It will bring. So I believe that when. Sorry. Hello? So I believe that when we travel to all these places, yeah, we can always uh, get an opportunity to learn from each other. I can see Jessica is saying, we always think of the opportunity, G, uh, Masai Mara or school fees. Yeah, I know. But you will never stop going to school. You will never, these things will never end. Yeah, so we can always, it's just a matter of sacrificing by, like in our company, we accept Lipa Pole Pole. You tell me, Beryl, I want to go to Masai Mara at this particular time. Give me a plan. I'll come, give you a plan, tell you how many people are you. We create a package for you, then tell you it's gonna work like this. We allow Lipa Pole Pole. Then you realize you, you get an opportunity to, I think you get an opportunity to have this experience. Um, the problem is Selim is telling us that the problem is the, the problem is money. I believe that uh, the challenge it's not the problem. The challenge is money, but with positivity, uh, things are going to open up. Right now, the economy is too tough for everybody. Things are not things are not working right for us. Many people, even us in business. But uh, in, the, in the near days to come, things are going to be, we are optimistic that things are going to work out and doors are going to open for everyone. So given an opportunity to go out of Kenya, I will not hesitate, high cost of living increasing by, by, day by day. Yes, I agree with you, Nelly. But uh, Dr. Tina can tell us, uh, the more we say that in Kenya, life is very expensive. When, when we receive these uh, visitors coming to Kenya, they tell us that life in Kenya is affordable. So until you go on the other side, that is when you will get to experience what's really what is really happening. Then Emily is telling us that visa is the challenge. Uh, Emily, uh, we can assist you with visa. Let us know where you want to travel to then we can give you guidance on how to get your visa. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave um, 
I'll leave our contacts here, down here on the chat box. So if anybody needs assistance with the visa, all kinds of visa, kindly get in contact with us and then we're gonna assist you. In this case, budgeting, budgeting is the trick, planning as well. With budgeting, you can reach your goal. Yes, true, Lynette, I agree to that. Celine is saying, let's make a little more money and visit one another. Without finances, it's impossible. Let's get ideas of rearing more cows and ensure they do not die like what I saw in, the, in, Northern, in Northern Eastern. Yes, true, true. I agree to that, uh, that Celine. But by, uh, by moving from one place to another and exchanging ideas, not sticking in one place, by traveling, you're able to open up your mind and get to see what other thing you can do to better your life wherever you are. So let's encourage one another by not looking at uh, only going or traveling abroad. I believe that we can get to learn a lot of things here in Kenya. As we say, uh, home is best, East West home is best. But again, whatever opportunity open, opens, up, opens up for us, wherever we desire to go, uh, any person who has the ability to hold each other Let's hold one another and ensure that we make each other's life better. By us being in the, in the travel profession, we will help you, guide you on uh, visa issues. We will help you, guide you on how to acquire the, your air tickets. If you need a place <clears throat> to rest in between the journey, we will help you by uh, securing you or getting you hotel bookings. We can also help you with travel insurance. One of the very, very important thing that people forget to purchase travel insurance. I'll encourage each and everyone, wherever you're traveling, international travel, try and get yourself, even if you're going for a visit, travel insurance is very important. We've had guests who travel from Kenya, get to the other part of the world, fall ill. Now, when you get ill on the other part of the world, you don't want to be admitted in the hospital. And Tina can, Dr. Tina can tell us that you cannot purchase doc, um, medicine or drugs over the counter like the way we do here at home. So anytime you want to travel ab abroad, please uh, encourage yourself by getting um, travel insurance so that you're covered in case your baggage is lost, in case you fall ill on the other side, in case you lose your items, you're able to claim that. And uh, the travel insurance will take care of all your medical costs. Uh, not forgetting, we do holiday packages wherever you want to go. If you want to go to Dubai, Malaysia, Mauritius, all these visa, visa free countries, <clears throat> they're countries that uh, Kenyans are looking forward into traveling into. So you can do this uh, as a form of relaxation, opening up of your mind, uh, seeing other, the other world, how it looks like. Uh, going out here, staying a week without eating ugali, it's kind of fascinating. It can be depressing, but you know, um, you get to understand that you can live without some things and life has to go on. So I think that's it from me. Uh, if you want more information, you can always check us up at uh, www.greyimpalasafaris.com. You can call us and we'll be able to assist you. Uh, I am thinking of farming. I'm, I'm thinking farming is a way to go. Mahali uh, Tumefika. Tina, that's for you. I was in Rwanda in yes, January. And yes, I, yes, yes. I, I think I was in Rwanda in January and I tell you to fun, clean environment, good treatment. We need to improve as a country. We need to improve as a country. Kenya, we need to improve as a country. We have a lot of learning to do. That I agree with you, Celine. <laughs> Our uh, home is the best, but, but also our visa will be of great help to go try out there for comparison and more. Yes, Lucy, home is the best, I agree, but also uh, let, me, let me know how we can assist you matters visa, as uh, traveling is the only way out. We, we get to open our minds and get to see what's happening out there. We get to learn what's happening out there. Like, for example, the guy who's uh, the owner of... Uh, the son of the owner of Pride in Group of Hotels. Him going out is what made him open up his mind. His dad was running the business, the kind of, um, the small, small, you know, the lodge, the small uh, bed and breakfast. 
But when, when the young man went out and uh, got information and got to open up his mind, got to see how hotels are on the other side of the world, he came back with this knowledge and set up what we are seeing now and the business is running out very, very successfully. Oh, so yeah. traveling opens us up. Traveling is opening uh, most of us, our minds, and giving us that. opportunities. So wherever we get an opportunity to go, wherever we get an opportunity to go out, please, 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 let's travel. Let's travel. Yeah. So uh, I can see. Yeah. Please put your contact, Beryl. Yeah. Rosalind is asking for your contact. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Maybe you can also uh, read it aloud because uh, I'm going to share the recording to various people. Yeah. So you can call me on 0728. Zero seven two eight six three zero one eight eight or zero seven two eight six three five two one three. You can also reach us on. I can see people have started calling me already. You can also reach us on. Uh, Zero four five seventy three zero seven nine four five zero four five seventy three and lastly you can also call us on zero seven fourteen eight three three two seven seven. Good, thank you very much. That is awesome. And now that somebody was talking about farming, I have my project girl here. She would like to talk to you. Uh, please talk to my friends. Nashe, talk to my friends. They are looking at you. Go ahead. Uh, it is a big plant, and it will be growing up into a tree. And you can make your own with. You can put just. You show a them your bean plant. Okay, sorry. Let me let me remove this so that they see you well. Uh, let me remove this so that they see you well. Uh, you just, don't really. Uh, they just see me. Huh? They just see me. Like okay, it. now they, they can see you clearly. Now talk to them. Tell them what you did with your bean plant. I grew my bean plant, and it has. My name on it. So you can actually see it, but it can make one. You just need to put a seed. So the seed is right here. You cannot actually see it because it's in the middle. So you can make it, but you have to bake it that fast because you have to water it that fast or else it might dry up. So that is how it looks like. <laughs> yeah, Konashe is learning to grow uh, plants. She loves gardening. And uh, we are working on uh, education for sustainable projects in Canada. We have started with Konashe. Konashe, how old are you? Five. Uh, Kunashe is five years old. <laughs> yeah, so she's just challenging us that we need to go to the garden. <laughs> Thank you very much. You can now go and play. Yeah, she insisted that she really wants to talk to my friends. Now, <laughs> I think we are good to go. We are good to go. And uh, about traveling abroad, Diana, Diana, where are you? I know everybody thinks about uh, traveling abroad is um, so exciting. Yes, it is exciting. The experience is awesome uh, because it's not like what we have back in. 
but you realize that some of the opportunities that we are talking about here are actually um, opportunities we can as well embrace at home. Because uh, in these countries, there is money. But uh, the green pasture, it's not green. It is, um, what can I say? It is uh, the grass. You see the grass that is, what, what do we call that grass that has dried? Hey. Yes, that one. <laughs> so you have to water it for it to, to, to be good enough for you to make good use of it. Because there is what we call minimum wage. The minimum wage here is like $15 per hour. If I go working for like six hours, I have made my $90 in a day, you know? So, and, uh, and you're not limited to working at night or working uh, during the day. It is now up to you to organize yourself to pick on the jobs and work. Because every job in uh, Canada is a profession, it's professional. Like you cannot be allowed to even clean in a hotel if you've not gone through some courses. You cannot be allowed even to, to, to do the, the simple things that you, you we usually do at home. Uh, even sweeping uh, the road or removing uh, uh, whatever, what is it called? Snow on the roads because you are paid for doing that work until you have gone through some course. So every, every job here, there is no job that is looked at like it is, uh, it is a dirty job or every job here is a decent. Even taking care of children, it is decent job because you get good money out of it. So when you are planning to come to Canada or when you're planning to go to Australia as an adult, you must always ask yourself the question, why am I going there? Why do I have to leave what I am having here in Kenya to go there? Basically for me, the main reason as to why I came of course was to make that money and to have my children be in good schools, have a good education because like the CBC we are introducing in Kenya, uh, the consultants are actually from Canada. So I, ca I have now firsthand information of what CBC looks like. The things we are doing in Kenya, my friends, to not struggle for no good reason. If we had picked what is here and brought it to our country, then CBC can work. But if we are continuing to do the things that we are doing, I think we need to, to do what we call further consultation, having uh, people come and visit schools, have an exchange program, have our children be in schools in Canada uh, for some time so that when they come back home, they don't just go to their schools, but to share their experiences in those classrooms with everybody else in the country. Otherwise, I, I don't know how far we are going with our CBC. I want to encourage the people that are on with CBC to think about it again. I was so surprised when I, I took my children to school. As I told you here, Education is totally free. Everything is free, including transporting my children from home to school and bringing them back. I pay nothing, totally nothing. And the education there is top class. I'm like, I was, I removed my daughter from Alliance Girls and everybody was mad on me. Like, how can you remove your daughter from Alliance Girls? Eh? You know, huh? my friends, let me tell you. Bado to Kombali, we are still very far. When I went to that school, the first place we visited was the guidance and counseling unit, where my daughter was taken through the various pathways because she's in form, she was in form three. And uh, right now uh, the Canadians are finishing their second semester for them to go to the next grade. So my daughter, was placed in grade 10, which is equivalent to form two, so that she can transit to grade 11 in September this year, which was quite good. So in the process, the guidance and counseling teachers, not one, but three, their 
seated with me, the parent, and my daughter. Taking us through step by step, what is it that you want to do in the future? Uh, before then, my daughter, my daughter had done some, some, some assessment to know whether she's good in English, maths, uh, physics, these this other things, yeah? And when my daughter was like, I want to be a doctor, now they started <laughs> taking, her, taking us step by step what it takes to be a doctor. Now, looking at your assessment, your mathematics, this area, you didn't do it well. What are you going to do about it step by step? They linked my daughter to a mathematics teacher immediately, called the teacher and told the teacher, now you'll have to work with Jennifer until she has mastered this because this girl wants to be a doctor. Then after that, now going around the school, the orientation, my God. It is not like students are in a classroom fixed in one classroom. The classrooms are subject classrooms that you move from the way we do it in the university. The way the program is set, students will move from one class to attend to another class. It is the teachers who are in those classes, not the students. So students don't have fixed lockers. They will rotate from one class to another, depending on what they are doing or what they are, they are taking next. When we come to the laboratories, we come to whatever, whatever the children have, have decided to do, if it is engineering, if they want to do engineering, the teachers bring their cars to the workshop in the school for the children to learn and repair the teacher's cars. I mean, if it is about uh, models, the children themselves make the robots, the robots, they make the models, you know, if it is about woodwork, it's a, a whole workshop. As in you get in, there is a, a, a trainer there, a teacher there who is waiting for the students to come and learn with him. So the teachers are specialized and they are in their rooms. If it is a language room, there is uh, there are various uh, whatever things like um, phonetics. Yani, you know, you are like I mean, this is what education is supposed to be. I am so happy that I came. As much as uh, uh, there is that bit of struggling because I don't have a job at the moment, uh, I'm happy because my children are happy. When you go to the primary school where my boy is, oh my God, the teachers are just, I don't know what to say. Very concerned, very concerned about each and every child. Anytime, uh, anytime um, my son is getting late, I have to get a message immediately that Joseph has not reported. Could you be knowing where he is? Because now, uh, school to where my where we stay to school for Joseph he doesn't use a bus because it's very near so he uses a bicycle to school you know so they are I mean I, my people we I think we need to do something about education in Kenya it is not it is not like I am despising what we are doing but uh, we need to do something and then subjects they do four subjects in a semester, four. How many subjects are our children taking in a term? 13, 15, I mean, why? So children here are taking what they need. You see, we are bogging our children with so many subjects, they don't even need them in the future. I mean, my daughter is simply taking physics, mathematics, you know, uh, English second lang English as a second language, and what was that? Something to do with music. I mean, and that is all for the term. Then next semester, she'll be taking another four units. Then after that, she'll move to, you know, I mean, there is something we need to do about our education in Kenya. We are giving our children so much, or we gave ourselves so much until when you grow up, you don't even know which line to focus on. You are trying this, you are trying that. I have this talent. I don't know where to place it. 
I am good in this. I don't know how to go about it. Uh, CBC, the people doing it in Kenya, I will challenge you that you, you visit Canada, you get to go to these schools and see exactly what is happening in schools. Let us not just call people from Canada to come to Kenya to tell us that do this and do that. Come and get to those classrooms and see what is happening in those classrooms. And you will be able to transform Kenya through CBC because CBC is the best thing that has happened to our country. Reduce the subjects. Our children don't need all those subjects. They don't need them, yeah? Reduce those subjects, let the children do what they need for the future. So if it is the line of medicine, what subjects go with medicine? If it is engineering, what kind of subjects must this child take? If it is in the line of arts, what is it that this child needs for the future? What they don't need, they don't need it. So let us reduce the, the baggage and have them focus on what they really need. Now coming, coming to Canada, those who want to come, continue. I gave you a contact, Diana is here. Diana, are you there again? You want to, to know how to go to Canada or to Australia? Uh, Diana is a very good link person who can give you all the information that you need. And uh, any further consultation, you can always uh, WhatsApp me. I will, I will give you direction or link you up to the right person to give you the very correct information. So I can see Caleb's hand is up. Caleb, uh, you want to say something? Not really. I think I waved and uh, the, the wave sign has not left to the screen. There? I waved a while ago and the sign has not left the screen, so I'm oh, fine. Sorry. So you can put it down. Yeah. But uh, what people, you know why people come to Canada or go to America or go to Australia and get lost? It's because people here work hard. From one job to another to another, you can make a lot of money if you are ready to work. And if you are ready not to choose work. I mean, if you think that, oh, I trained as a teacher, so I just have to get a, a teaching job, uh, that will not work here. You have to be ready to, to go through these other short courses for you to start doing uh, simple things, huh? simple things, uh, 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 simple chores for you to, to earn that money. Because any job will give you money. I mean, any job you do here will give you money. That is the beauty about it. It's not like in Kenya, you struggle doing this, you struggle doing that, and you're not getting uh, the, the, the whatever, the reward of the work that you're doing. Here, every work is rewarded. And it's uh, such a beautiful thing. Any question? I'm still looking for Diana. Are you there? Diana, will you end up happy? Diana, okay, maybe she, let me see Diana. Okay, so maybe we will talk, Diana will talk to us uh, next week about immigration, uh, but uh, it is a good thing. It's a good thing to be in these countries to experience what you hear about. When you, you call your relatives and they don't send you money, don't don't kill them because they work to get that money. Yeah, they'll have the money, yes, but they do a lot of work for them. To, they have they sacrifice a lot to get that money. So some people will will not send you money because they are saying, I'm doing all this, and somebody is just sitting and waiting to ask for money. I mean, yeah. So it is about thinking about the resources we have in our country, where we can put our hands, put the hands there, let us work. And when you get the opportunity to come to Canada, like me, I have no problem because I've been working so hard back in Kenya on matters to do education for sustainable development. I used to go to the garden. 
even here now, if I do, I, I, I get any opportunity to do any job, I will do it because I am used to working. So what are your mambo ya kukaa kwa ofisi eti unangoji uletewe chai unangoji ufanyiwe kila kitu uh, at home assist in their household chores fanya tu kazi i mean god gave us these hands to work and now i've come to realize what it means when uh, people say when says god will bless the work of your hands when you work hard you get the money here in canada so there is nothing like a green pasture here. My friends, you have to work and you have to sacrifice. But for the children, oh my God, their life is just the best. It is the best. So for me, my way question, I did it for my children and I'm happy about it. For you, I don't know why you want to do it. For the, for the young people who you want to send to these countries, Muta Memaliza Form 4, you unamtuma Canada, unamtuma Australia, unamtuma US, ensure that there is a family, the other end, or there is somebody uh, who is an adult over the other side who can receive them and walk with them the path instead of them getting distressed. Because here, when they come, they have to struggle to survive. Yeah? But when they have somebody to work with them, then it becomes very easy. Wacha kutuma watoto hivo. That is why our children wanakuja hapa, they don't get into class. Because kuna pesa hapa na pale na pale, they find themselves now going for these jobs. They forget about what brought them to, to, to these countries. For them to study, remember I said, they must have somebody to work with them. Don't just be happy that mtoto wako amepata visa anaenda. Hey, you need to ask yourself anaenda wapi? Eh? Unatuma mtoto anakuja anaona pesa iko hapa na pale na pale, anaacha kusoma. They stop going to school and start looking for the money. And the moment they start getting the money, it's a lot of money, they will not go to school. They will be I'm in school but they are not in school. So make sure you link them up with somebody. Yeah, link them up with somebody. That will really help. Sylvester Otieno, your hand is up. Is it? Oh, this is my casa. Anybody with a question? I think we are done for today. Let me not add you so much. Uh, uh, Charles has done a good job. Same as Beryl. Now you know some of those things that you needed to know. So I wanted uh, Diana to tell us something small about immigration, but uh, apparently it's like she, her time, uh, she's also very committed. She decided that we will talk next Sunday because she, needs, she has a lot to share with us. I hope that is okay with all of us. Mimi story zangu ni mingi. Hapa, hapa ni kuzuri. Kuja tu. Ni kuzuri sana. Ni kuzuri. Just come. But you have to be ready to do what? To work. Let me see. Any questions? Any questions? How easy or hard is it to get express entry? It's not that easy. It's not that easy. Um, uh, I will give you Diana's contact. I will give you Diana's contact. Let me see Diana. Um, that is the right person. Musumbwe kabisa na mkuje. Diana's contact is um, 0724 0724 uh, 411-221, 411-221, yeah. So, and uh, something I think you need to know is that here everything is straight. It's very rare to get uh, an, an aspect where you can maneuver your, your, your things like, I think it is the best place for Christians to be because Izo ma temptations ziko kwetu hakuna. 
you don't find yourself bribing. You can't bribe. I mean, you can't. How? <laughs> you can't. Even the transport system is just, if there is anything wrong that you're doing, the, the, the whatever, the streets, whatever, lights, the street, whatever, what are they called? Um, cameras, the street cameras will identify your car because your car is registered under your name and nobody can drive your car. You are the, supposed to drive your car. I mean, you make any mistake, you, you just uh, sent an email, you're supposed to report to the police because you did this and that. It, systems are really smooth. Nothing like you find yourself do, doing things that you didn't want to do like corruption. Otherwise, I want to thank you all for making your time to join this meeting. Uh, something moving like what Beryl and um, and uh, and Charles did. If you know God has blessed you with some information that you can give others, this is a forum for us to share. I don't want to own it like it is. No, no, no. It's not about Christine. It's about us. It is about us. Let us share because sharing is inspiring. When you give out, you get more. Yeah. When you know something, you have that information, please give it to people. Because when you give people, you are saving uh, our country. Uh, because the Bible says, my people are, are suffering because of lack of information. I want to look for ways to give you as much information as I can and also to remain relevant. Those who know me, mimi napenda kufunza watu. Sasa nimetoka kemi. Sina wanafunzi wa kufunza. Si sasa tukuja hapa tu some some hizi vitu zetu kidogo kidogo. I mean, thank you so much and uh, may God bless you. Uh, if there is no more question, there is no more concern. Thank you Kennedy, thank you for appreciating. Uh, mimi kawaida I love you so much. That is why I take my time to do all this. Sunday is the best day for me because I'm home with uh, the children and uh, I will always get time because your 6 p.m. is my 11 a.m. So from 11 to 1, we can always have a discussion. So sometimes I, 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 I actually have that time for you. Otherwise, God bless you. And thank you for your encouragement. Thank you for being there for me. Those of you who have uh, supported me to raise my fees, God bless you so much. And uh, when I will become very rich, because I will, <laughs> I will return threefold. And may God, may God bless you. Can I request somebody to pray for us? Who can pray for us so that I allow you now to, to go and uh, meet your families and maybe sleep? Monica, you want to pray? Thank you. Please unmute yourself. Yeah, Mimi, I will tell you things the way they are. They don't want to tell you that all oh, life is not that easy as you imagine, that you have to be ready to do these things. Me, I will tell you. Yeah, because I will even tell you how I have started, because I will start working in May. I cannot be allowed to work until I start school. That is how serious things are here, because my study permit is tagged to my work permit. So I cannot work until I start studying. So when I will start working, I will come here and tell you what type of work I found. My very first job of uh, where I'll start earning dollars. <laughs> yeah, so that is it. And uh, thank you, Monica. Please pray for us. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful time that you have given us. We bless your name for all of us who participated. We want to thank you for Dr. Tina and our family. We pray for thy blessing, given as she continues to bless us. Pray that God, you will minister to each and every one. So as even as we stop this, we pray that God, you lift us from one glory to the next. 
for honor and glory of your name. We bless your holy name in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much and have a blessed uh, a blessed night. Thank have a so good day too. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, Every thank Sunday you. at six, you can invite your family members, you can invite your friends. Um, good day. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Okay, I'm missing you people. <laughs> but it's okay. Bye. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, bye. 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 Okay. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.